A crowd in the northern part of the Strip came under fire from guns and tanks as they gathered to obtain flour on Al Rashid Road, west of Gaza City. News agency footage was released on Monday, a day after the incident. Uh, Israeli forces have fired on crowds trying to get aid several times in the past. The UN's food agency says it was forced to suspend aid deliveries in the north because of this violence. And some Israelis have blocked humanitarian aid from getting into the Gaza Strip. The group lay in front of a border crossing with Egypt, preventing trucks from moving as they queued to get into Gaza. Aid trucks are meant to be checked in Egypt before they cross over. Well, the spokesperson of the UN's humanitarian office says a recent medical evacuation convoy was also stalled by Israeli forces for several hours. Despite prior coordination for all staff members and vehicles with the Israeli side, um, the Israeli forces blocked the WHO-led convoy for many hours the moment it left the hospital. The Israeli military forces, the, the Israeli military forced patients and staff out of ambulances and stripped all paramedics of their clothes. Three Palestinian Red Crescent Society paramedics were subsequently detained although their personal details had been shared with the Israeli forces in advance, while the rest of the convoy stayed in place for over seven hours. One paramedic has been released, and we appeal for the immediate release of the two others uh, and all other detained health personnel. Well, Tarek Abu Azum is live for us in Rafah in southern Gaza. And Tarek, Israel is not only blocking aid getting into Gaza, they're also targeting people trying to access the little food that has managed to get through. How difficult is it for people right now? Well, it has been widely systematic, uh, systematically clear how the Israeli military is very keen on exacerbating the humanitarian situation in the northern part of Gaza. It has been mostly reported the people being shot and exposed to the Israeli fire as they were waiting for humanitarian trucks to get to the northern part. Now, people there have been suffering from famine uh, from a very long weeks ago, as they have nothing to feed on. They have the, the majority of uh, food items in the Palestinian market with skyrocketing prices had run out completely from there. Alongside that, people also start depending on alternatives for adults, start depending on animal feed mixed with uh, rotten food in order to at least have uh, one loaf of bread for every couple of days, at least to remain uh, survive, just to, to, to be able to continue for the next day. And this is absolutely inhuman, despite all the international calls to remove all the restrictions being placed on aid delivery to the northern parts of Gaza. And even regarding the latest um, uh, aid parachuting from the Jordanian uh, military plane, uh, we did not really, uh, the majority of these aid did not really get to the people's hands because uh, large parts of it have been dropped in the water, have been completely ruined and cannot be really usable, uh, usable for human consumption. And this is absolutely terrifying. And two, now, only a ceasefire can help to mitigate the deterioration of humanitarian crisis in the northern part of territory. And Tarek, you're joining us on the phone now because you yourself were targeted as you were making your way uh, to the live location. We're, we're, first of all, we're, we're very happy to hear that you are OK, but can you just explain, run us through exactly what happened? Well, it's absolutely terrifying uh, moment when I just be targeted alongside with my, uh, my colleague, you know, to there, we are uh, getting ready to the live location. Uh, we just get in the car, start moving uh, peacefully, and then uh, we have been uh, completely uh, surprised by a drone attack just only one metre away from the driver's side. It's similar to that we managed to survive. A loud explosion took place. Luckily, no one of us had been injured. And uh, but we have been uh, traumatised from this attack. We have been right now suffering from a clear psychological attack. Uh, from such horrific attacks, because not, right now I'm being completely suffering from uh, with my ears being hurt, uh, being hurt from this military attack. Alongside my team, is unable also to speak well right now. He's psychologically traumatized, saying that we, are, we were close this time more than every single previous time of Israeli repeated attack had been carried down to one of the streets that had been targeted before, and it was full of people as, as since the moment of uh, uh, the attack. And right now we are trying to take all safety procedures in order to be uh, safe, but basically we have lost the sense 
of safety. We are no longer mm. feel safe in Gaza, even in the area that's supposed to be a safe zone. More than uh, 1.9 million Palestinians we have been following the Israeli orders to stay one of the fighting and moving from one place to another according to their instructions. And right now, we are ourselves being targeted. Maybe we do not know the real reason behind this targeting. Is it to silence our narrative to prevent us from keep, keeping reporting and informing the world regarding all the latest updates on the ground? Or it's, it's absolutely a chaos. We cannot really mm. think for right now we are entirely traumatized by this military attack. Uh, Terry, you have and your team have been doing an incredible job uh, of keeping everyone up to date with exactly what is going on there. You talked to, you've been uh, taking all of the safety precautions uh, as possible. That includes riding in cars that are clearly marked as press or as media, doesn't it? Yes, that's right. We have been uh, wearing our vests, our helmets, and with a sign back, this vehicle it belongs to uh, a broadcast channel. And this is absolutely terrifying because we have been, by the way, we have been moving on the same road for a couple of days, taking the same road without changing our uh, our uh, our direction. And it's absolutely terrifying, like how this can happen for journalists who must be protected by the principles of international law. And this is not new, by the way. They have mostly attacked on Yazira team before they have killed Samra Badaka killed different members of a Dahdur family. One of the latest attacks have killed my colleague Hamza. And right now, it seems that they are expanding the attacks, even for uh, journalists who are trying to send the, the message for the international community about what is happening here on the ground. And since the beginning of this war, more than 100 between Palestinian journalists have been killed. And we do not know exactly who is the next. Tarek, as always, we really, really do appreciate uh, all you and your team's incredible work uh, from Rafa and Gaza. Thank you.